what's the weirdest feature that you've ever come across with a monitor? Well, for me, it's this right here. And if it looks a bit confusing, don't worry, I'll explain everything. This is the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9. It has one of the strangest features that I've ever seen in a monitor, and I need your help to figure out if this feature is completely genius or completely insane. To find out, let's quickly run through some of the specs. At a massive 57 inches and a 140 ppi density, this is in fact the very first dual ultra HD monitor to ever exist, packing over 16 million pixels in this ultra-wide form factor. Imagine taking two 32-inch 4K monitors side by side and then magically erasing that middle bezel. That's essentially what we have here, which by itself would be impressive, but this is also a gaming monitor, meaning that it also has a 240 hertz refresh rate and one millisecond response time. On paper, that makes for one of the most unique monitors ever created. And because of all these specs, this monitor can also do something that up until this point has been impossible. And while I don't think this feature is going to be used a lot in practice, it's just so darn ridiculous that I can't stop thinking about it. And that, my friends, is the ability to play two PCs on the same monitor simultaneously, each at 4K 120Hz. These are both separate games right now. This one's running off of this PC, this one's running off of that PC, all while sharing the same screen. No other monitor in the world can do this right now at this high of a resolution. Imagine dual queuing with a teammate on a setup like this with your screens literally melting together. Actually, you don't have to imagine. I'll just show you. All I have to do is find a friend. Now we wait. Oh, well, that was quick. Do you want to play a game? Sure do. That's what the ad was for. Here? Wait, I didn't share my address with you. Oh, nice. It's a friend. Now that we have our friend requirement checked off, it's time to jump into some good old fashioned Fortnite duo queuing and put this ridiculous gaming setup to the test. And well, just like that, we won our first game. Was it all because we shared the same monitor? Well, maybe, but honestly, it was probably mostly luck. That said, having our screens bleed together was certainly more beneficial than distracting. Do you remember back in the day when stream peeking used to get you yelled at by your older brother, but would ultimately help you win the game by giving you that crucial advantage of extra information. That's basically what we did here to get our first victory royale. Instead of having to call out what we were seeing verbally, it was way easier just to glance over for a peek or to physically point to the other side of the screen. And because we're on the same team, this actually might be one of the best use cases of screen peeking that I can think of. This feature is technically known as PVP or picture by picture, which gives us each half the screen to work with on our respective inputs or PCs. And when half of the screen is still essentially a 32 inch 4K 120 hertz monitor, well, well, yeah, the overall game experience is still going to be pretty solid. But this is where I need you to let me know if you think this feature of being able to play two PCs on a single monitor at 4K high refresh rate is legitimately useful or just plain silly. I'm still a bit on the fence because I just love ridiculous stuff, but leave a comment down below and I'll read through them to get your perspective. I mean, would you use a feature like this personally? Anyway, since we got our first victory royale so easily with this side-by-side -side setup, we decided to ramp up the challenge and take it all a step further with PIP picture in picture as opposed to picture by picture. Now, our second display becomes this tiny window in the corner of the screen. I mean, I say tiny, but this is still roughly the size of an iPad. It just looks even more minuscule than it is in comparison to the now massive main display, which at this point is taking near full advantage of all 57 inches of the Odyssey Neo G9, and it looks so wild. Surprisingly, the game doesn't get all that stretched out at the edges, and you can still see things crystal clear, although you do now have to turn your head to see your inventory, which does take a little bit of getting used to. Now, this set was certainly a lot more challenging to handle, but we did our best scrapping through our first few enemy encounters, kept looting, kept shooting, kept surviving until there were only four people alive, including us. And this was when our ridiculous monitor setup came in clutch once again, as I was focused on my little
little slice of screen down here, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a pink bunny outfit racing from left to right. Except it wasn't even on my screen at all. It was actually right above my screen, technically on my partner's screen. But because my attention was already pulled in that direction, this gave me that crucial advantage of extra information and ultimately resulted in us achieving another sweet, sweet victory. Let's go! I'm really starting to like this setup. If you want to see us try any other types of games on this ultra-wide split PC display, then let me know which games in a comment down below. I mean, clearly there are some benefits of using this monitor for a side-by-side -side PC setup, but certainly this is far from Samsung's intended use case right? After all, the key selling point is to have the entire screen to yourself. And while we got somewhat of a taste of that in the previous setup, removing the PIP really lets the picture quality shine. And now, in all of its glory, 240 hertz with one millisecond response time on a dual Ultra HD widescreen is absolutely crazy. Now, thankfully, it natively supports AMD's FreeSync Premium Pro to reduce image tearing, and in case you're wondering, all these clips are powered by a 7900 XTX. And let me tell you, playing on this thing in full screen is an absolute joy. The picture quality looking so good, I think, is a combination of three things. HDR, the LED tech being used, and the four digits of nits. Starting with HDR, the dark sections of the screen show a surprising amount of color, making it even easier to do things like differentiate objects and see extra details in these low-light scenarios. On top of that, the contrast areas are even more finely tuned thanks to the use of quantum mini-LED technology, which sounds pretty intense, but honestly just means that there's a ton more lights than a typical LED display. This results in a more fine control over which pixels are lit up and which ones are not. Which brings us to the nits, a measure of brightness. This monitor has a peak brightness of around 1,000 candela per square meter, which is roughly three times as bright as a typical display, making sure that the brights stay super bright, adding even more contrast to the picture. All of that combined is a long way of saying the screen looks really good, and it continues to look good from edge to edge, which is certainly impacted by the curve of the monitor. The curve follows a 1,000 millimeter radius arc, and while during the unboxing process, I initially thought that was too steep, that it was too curved, it took all of a couple minutes for me to change my mind. With it being 57 inches, if I sit a couple feet away from the screen, the edges of the monitor almost perfectly line up with my peripheral vision, meaning that if I look directly down the middle, at least horizontally, all I see is screen, which is super immersive. Okay, but outside of gaming, how does this monitor hold up to productivity use cases? Well, in design tools like Fusion 360, Figma, and Unity, all the additional pixel-dense screen real estate ends up being used quite effectively. It helps that all these tools have a kind of built-in infinite space that starts off in the center of the screen and grows outwards. This results in a ton of area to focus on the core task of designing something, so apps like this run great on this screen. Now, when it comes to workspace tools like the Microsoft Office Suite equivalents, Excel also ends up working pretty nice because it can fill out all of that extra space. But as for Word and PowerPoint, the main working area is still trapped within that middle area, whereas the menus slide way off to the sides, which is far less than ideal. Tools like code editors also felt pretty hit or miss to me. Maybe if you enjoy writing a bunch of code in a single line, this would be perfect for you. But otherwise, it's not all that practical to keep full screen. And finally, video editors are a solid maybe in this format. Seeing more of your horizontal timeline is super helpful, but it's at the sacrifice of your viewing window, losing out on some of that vertical space. It's still pretty solid though. All that said, nothing forces you to use these apps entirely full screen all the time. In fact, the monitor's 32 by 9 aspect ratio makes putting two windows side by side super efficient since it means that they're both at a native 16 by 9 ratio. I think that's also why playing two PCs on this monitor works so well. I also recommend using a Samsung software called Easy Setting Box that automatically creates zones on your ultra-wide desktop, allowing you to more easily place windows in all sorts of useful orientations. As soon as I downloaded this, I was very thankful. Ah, there we go. So much better. This I can actually see myself using to be productive. Okay, if you're going to remember any part of this video, make sure it's this next section if you're actively considering buying this monitor. After using it for a little bit now, here are four of my candid thoughts to keep in mind. First, any GPU older than just a few years old might not be able to take full advantage of all this monitor has to offer. Only graphics cards that support HDMI 2.1 or DisplayPort 2.1 can actually unlock the 240Hz refresh rate. As I mentioned earlier, throughout this entire video, I was using the 7900 XTX, which does support these protocols and did work great throughout my testing. So yeah, your older GPUs unfortunately might not make the cut to take full advantage. That said, if you're shopping around for a $2,500 monitor, I'm going to kind of assume that you already have a decked out PC. And if not, priorities people, priorities. Second, bring a friend to help you unbox and set this thing up. Take my word for it, moving the heavy box is far less than ideal to do 
you alone. That said, actually unboxing the monitor ended up being a pretty nice experience since it was thoughtfully designed to be assembled without having to remove it from the box itself until the very end. <laughs> but even still, once it's all put together, this thing is heavy to move alone. And the last thing you want to do is risk dropping or scratching this monitor. Now, third is kind of related. Because it's so heavy, don't expect to be able to easily slide it around your desk to make adjustments or to say sneak your mouse pad underneath the legs, which is what I wanted to do. While the stand does allow the monitor to tilt and swivel and rise up and down super easily, moving side to side is not its strong suit. So if you do need to slide it from one side of your desk to the other, just call up that friend again who helped you unbox it so you can safely move it without damaging it. And last but not least, number four, the DisplayPort cable that comes included with the monitor is short. Or maybe the monitor's just really long, I can't tell. But regardless, when plugged into the back of your G9, the cable barely reaches further than the edge of the screen. Now, this 1.2 meter cable is intentionally designed like this to help minimize data loss between the monitor and PC. So just something to keep in mind, especially if you currently have your computer set up over on a side table or far along the ground. And with that, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this ridiculous monitor. Thank you for joining me in exploring it today. And thank you to Samsung for sponsoring this video. Pre-orders for the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 open up between September 18th and October 1st, which you can learn more about in the description down below. As always, I've been Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one.